Hello, educator friends. Today we are going to be looking at Google Docs and how it can support you in assessment in your classroom. My name is Jenny Cho Magara, and I'm going to be taking you through how I use it in my classroom. So here we are at the Google Docs page. Once you have set up your free Google account, you can come here to docs.google.com and you can create your own Google documents. Today we are going to be working with spreadsheets and forms. So the first thing I want to do is go to create new form. Then it's going to come up with this template. You can see that there's a lot of different fields and it's pretty self-explanatory, but we'll still walk through quickly so that you can see how to create your own. I'm going to call this a sample test for my students. Then I can give any sort of directions I want for my kids, such as you may use your calculator, you may not use your calculator, please take out a bag of manipulatives, work with a partner, etc. Then I have my first question title. This is almost always the kid's name. Then I can give help text. If I want it to be last comma first, I could put it that way. Then I have a myriad of options from which to choose for how the kids may respond. I have text, paragraph text for a longer response, multiple choice, check boxes, etc. Today we are going to do text for name since it's a short answer. And I'm going to make this required, being that the kids cannot submit this form without answering this field. Next, I'm going to click on the pencil to edit the second question. I'm going to say, what is Miss Magara's favorite color? I'm going to make this one a multiple choice, and I'm going to say red, green, blue, or orange. Make that also required so they cannot submit without answering. Now you see I've run out of questions, but not to fear. I go right up here and I can add another item. I'm going to go with the multiple choice again, and I'm going to say, what is Miss Magara's middle name? I'm going to say Jane, Jennifer, Misong, or Matthew. Make it required and done. Finally, I'm going to add in, let's do a paragraph text. What do you think we should learn about in science this year? Now, if I don't make it required, you'll notice that the red star does not generate. Reasons you may not want to have required questions are as follows. Optional questions, extra credit, or perhaps you don't want to cut kids off. That means the a form cannot be submitted until all the required questions are filled out. Also, a form cannot be saved to come back to later. So if you want a kid who maybe works a little bit more slowly than others to turn in what they have and maybe come back and finish the form later, what they'd have to do is submit two separate forms. So let's say I work very slowly and you give me five minutes to work on this and I only finish problems one and two. If I make all of these required, then that child cannot submit anything until they finish the entire test. However, if you do not make all of them required, then they could submit these first two, hit submit, then come back to the form again later, say after lunch, and finish this last one. You'll have two different item entries for that child, but at least you'll get all of their information. So that's something to think about as you create your form and decide whether or not to make items required or not required. Once I'm done with my form, I hit save. So now I have my form created and will generate on the home screen of my Google Docs. You'll see it's right here, sample test. So I can go ahead and I can put this into another folder. I'm going to organize it into my PD samples. And then you can see I can go into that collection and I see it right there. Now I didn't have to do that, but as you begin to generate more and more of your Google Forms, you'll want to start creating collections, otherwise you are going to get very confused. However, the forms also work like anything in Google where you can search by keyword right up here. So now I'm going to go to my Google site. This is the landing from which I launch all of my forms. This really helps streamline the process so I do not have to give lots and lots of links to my kids. They simply come to this website, which is bookmarked on their iPad or laptop, and you can see that I have in the menu here all of my 
um, pages for exit tickets. I can create new pages as I go or simply replace the exit tickets that are already existing here. So let's say I want to replace my science exit ticket with the one I just created. I click on that page and then I go to edit. Then I can click on the form and go to properties and you can see here I can change the form that is generated in this spot. I'll click on sample test and select it. I can modify the height and the width. I left it blank because I want it to be at 100% width. Hit save, save again, and here I go. Here's my science exit ticket. Now it's the sample test. I can have the kids go ahead and go in here to now begin to actually take the test. What I can do is go back to my Google Docs and click on sample test and you see now I have it in spreadsheet form. This is where the students' answers will be generated as they submit their form. So on the left hand side I'm going to pretend to be a student and on the right you're going to see the teacher view. So I'm going to go ahead and be Joe Johnson. I'm going to say that Miss McGarry's favorite color is blue. Her middle name is Misong, and I think we should learn about science. I want to learn about ducks. I'm going to hit submit, and you can see it's automatically generated here. I can go ahead and be another student. I could be Joe's little sister, Jane. I think her favorite color is green. Her middle name is Jennifer, and I want to learn about space. Hit submit. Now I have some of the answers generated. Now I can grade this in a couple ways. I can use a script called Flubberoo, which I'll show you in the second of these video series, or I can use conditional formatting. To do that, I click in this square to select the entire spreadsheet, and I go to Format, Conditional Formatting. Then I can decide what my correct text will be. For example, I want the answer to be blue when I say it's my favorite color. I can change the backgrounds to be blue, and I can save this rule. You can see now that this turns blue. Let's say I just want to do it for a column. For this column, anything that comes out as misong is going to turn blue. I save those rules, and there it happens. Here, there's no right or wrong answer, so I wouldn't do anything. So let's watch as this works. I go back to the form. Now I am Jake Howard. I think that Miss McGarry's favorite color is blue. I think that her middle name is Jane. Actually, let's get that one right, too. And I'm going to say nothing. Oh, no. And you can see that the answers are automatically colored. I can change the color. I can change it by row or by column. And I can have it so that as I go, it can be automatically generated. Then I can go ahead and sort the data, just like you would an Excel spreadsheet, to create differentiated groups tomorrow based on their answers. So that's how I do conditional formatting and creating my forms for my daily formative assessments in class. In the second of these videos, we'll talk about auto-grading using the script Flubberoo. Thanks for watching.